Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at introduction to quarks, charge of quarks, strangeness of quarks, and we're going to finish off with a summary. So first of all we're going to introduce the idea of quarks. Hadrons are a class of particle that include the proton and the neutron. So we've already come across the group of particles which are called the hadrons and we've seen that two examples of hadrons are the proton and also the neutron. So both these particles are classified as hadrons. Different hadrons vary in their properties such as charge and rest mass. So we can compare the charge of protons and neutrons. So here we have a proton and here we have a neutron. So we know that the charge of a proton is equal to plus one. It's got a positive charge. And we know that a neutron is neutral, so it has zero charge. And we can also compare their masses because in fact, although they've got very similar masses, their masses are slightly different. So a proton has a rest mass of 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, whereas a neutron has a rest mass of 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So they've got slightly different rest masses and they've got different charges. But if they're both classified as hadrons, why do they have these different properties? These differences can be explained by assuming hadrons are made up of smaller particles. So if we were to take a closer look at a proton, we'd find that it's actually made up of smaller particles. So we've said that hadrons aren't fundamental particles, which means that they can be broken up into smaller particles. So they're made up of other particles that are smaller, whereas leptons that we've previously encountered are fundamental particles, so they can't be split into smaller particles and we call these smaller particles quarks. So the particles that make up protons and neutrons and other hadrons are called quarks. So although protons and neutrons aren't fundamental particles because they're made up of smaller particles, these quarks can't exist in isolation, so they must be combined in order to form other hadrons. There are three types of quarks, referred to as the first generation quarks, termed up, down and strange. So here we can see we've got our different quarks. So our blue circle represents the up quark, our red circle represents the down quark, and finally our yellow circle represents the strange quark. So these are the images we're going to use for quarks throughout our videos. We can represent these quarks with symbols. So for our up quark we use a U, for our down quark we use D for down, and for our strange quark we use an S. So these are the symbols we use for the different quarks. And we've previously encountered that all particles have a corresponding antiparticles, and this is also the case for quarks. So each quark has a corresponding antiquark. So we have the anti-up quark, we have the anti-down quark, and we've also got the anti-strange quark. So these are all antiquarks. And their symbols are the same as the symbols for the quarks, but with a bar on top to show that it's the antiquark. So we've seen that quarks make up protons and neutrons and other hadrons, and we've seen that different hadrons actually have different charges. So we're going to see how the charge of quarks can actually affect um, the charges of protons and neutrons and other hadrons. So each quark has a characteristic charge. So for example here our up quark has a particular charge. These charges are all some fraction of the elementary charge. So if we're looking at our up, down and strange quarks, they've each got a charge and each of their charge is a fraction of the elementary charge. So for example, the up quark has a charge of plus two thirds of the elementary charge. So it's not a whole elementary charge, it's only a fraction. 
and then the down quark has a charge of minus a third of the elementary charge. And the strange quark also has a charge of minus a third of the elementary charge. And we can add the charge for the different combinations of quarks in hadrons to give its overall charge. So for example, here we've got a number of quarks making up a hadron and if we add together the charges of these quarks we can get the overall charge of the hadron. For example we can add the charges of the quarks in a proton to find its overall charge. So let's look at the quark composition of a proton. We can see that it's made up of two up quarks. So the charge of an up quark we've said is equal to plus two thirds of the elementary charge. And then this proton is also made up of one down quark. And we've said that the charge of a down quark is equal to minus a third of the elementary charge. So we can add these charges together to get the proton charge. So the proton charge is going to be equal to two times the charge of the up quark so 2 times 2 thirds of the elementary charge, and that's because we've got 2 up quarks, plus the charge of the down quark, which is minus a third. So we've got 2 times 2 thirds plus minus a third. So this gives us the proton charge as plus 1e, which is in fact correct. We know that the proton charge is plus 1 of the elementary charge. We can summarise the relative charge of each quark in a table. So if we're looking at the relative charges, the up quark has a charge of plus two thirds, the down quark has a charge of minus a third, and the strange quark has a charge of minus a third as well. An antiquark has the same magnitude of charge as its corresponding quark, but the opposite sign. So that means for our anti-up quark, we're going to have a charge of minus two thirds, so the magnitude is the same two-thirds, we're just reversing the sign. For our anti-down quark, we're going to have plus a third. Again, same magnitude, opposite sign. And for our anti-strange, we have plus a third as well. So the final property we're going to look at that's related to quarks is something called strangeness. Some quarks have an additional property we are interested in called strangeness. So strangeness is a property just related to quarks and we will look, about, look into it in a lot more detail in a later video. Only strange quarks and antiquarks possess strangeness. So here we have our strange quark and here we have our anti-strange quark and these are the only quarks that possess strangeness. Unlike charge, the strangeness of a strange quark is negative, with a value of minus 1. This means the strangeness of a strange antiquark is positive, with a value of plus 1. So again, going back to our strange and anti-strange quarks, we've said that a strange quark has negative strangeness. So its strangeness is going to be equal to minus 1. Whereas the strangeness of its antiquark is going to be equal to plus one. So the strangeness of the strange quark and anti strange quark have the same magnitude but opposite charge. Up and down quarks and antiquarks simply have a strangeness of zero. In other words, they have no strangeness. So going back to our up, down, anti up, and anti down quarks. If we examine their strangeness, we find that they all have zero strangeness. So they have no strangeness. We can summarise the strangeness of each quark in a table along with charge. So we saw previously how we summarised the charge of each of the quarks in a table, and we can do the same thing for their strangeness. So we saw for up, down and strange quarks, they have charges of plus two thirds, minus a third, minus a third, respectively. And now if we look at their strangeness, we've said up and down quarks have no strangeness. So their strangeness is zero. And the strangeness of a strange quark is minus one.
Similar to charge, the strangeness of an antiquark is the same magnitude, but with the opposite sign of its corresponding quark. So again, we can summarise the charges. We said an anti-up quark has a charge of minus two thirds, anti-down has a charge of plus a third, and the anti-strange quark also has a charge of plus a third. And we can also write in their strangeness. So anti-up and anti-down, similar to up and down quarks, have no strangeness. So the strangeness is zero. And the anti-strange quark has a strangeness of plus one because it has opposite strangeness to the strange quark. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.